Good evening, Arusha. How are you doing? When all has been said and done, the destination of this great continent lies in these very hands, these very minds. Africans, it is our time. But in order to get there, we need an education system that rewires us to think differently. We don't currently have that education, and we need it. We need it now. We need an education that teaches us to be critical thinker-doers. Not just thinkers, not just criticism galore, but people who do. People who don't run away from problems, but towards problems. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share it with you an experience I've been having since about three years ago. When I convinced my colleagues in South Africa to really dream together, to vent together, and to come up with a new vision. I drew them from across all over the world, from Brazil, the United States, the United Kingdom, and eight African countries. The idea to rethink our education system so that it is cross-cultural, multidisciplinary, and problem-solving. The way we would go about this would be as soon as we are done with our jobs, particularly those of us with the diaspora, we get on the plane, we come home, we join each other, and we get busy, messing up the brains of our PhD students. Secondly, we resolved that we would break the barrier of distance and begin collaborating across scale to teach the courses that we want. We got internet now. And so what we would do would be to co-teach classes across distance. The basis for that syllabus would not just be resident in, academic, in, the, in academia. It would have to percolate to that level where the majority of our people are, the everyday. We had a vision to transform the everyday into a roving university, a system where you Kids don't have to go to leave their village in order to go to the city to get an education or to go to the United States to get the best of education. We would come to them. This was the vision. Now, this is a vision I had a long time ago. Back in 2008, I was still fresh faced from graduate school. And those of you who have been to grad school know what I'm talking about. And I joined the people of Makuleke in South Africa to document this indigenous knowledge. You just heard Yvonne talk about the proverbs. We started documenting it, not only as an archive, but if a philosophical template from which an African imagination could happen. In Africa, that saw the world from itself. As the late Julius Nyerere once said, physician, know thyself first. That was the vision. We also had in mind not just being ourselves, the professors on a high horse coming to civilize the natives, but to actually leave a seed within where the young folks that we were intersecting with, we were gathering the data with, could actually themselves do the research store the knowledge within the villages so that it could act as a catalyst, one of our themes, as a catalyst for grassroots-based, ground-up knowledge production in the village. And when everything was done, we would turn this network, starting at Makulege as the headquarters, and fan out linking community by community, block by block, so that these areas could become 
nodes of knowledge production. What kind of knowledge am I talking about? What do I mean when I mean everyday knowledge? I mean ceasing to see the African countryside as only a site where problems happen, where the region of the earth live, but to reimagine it as a site of immense knowledge production, what I call creative resilience, where people, even when their backs are against the wall, they just don't roll over and die. They die fighting. That fighting is not just a, a question of resilience. What undergirds that resilience is creativity at core. Now, what kind of knowledge is this? You may ask. So you have, I grew up riding bulls. Uh, I grew up doing all kinds of fun things. I'm pretty sure that girls here who grew up in Africa did the same thing, playing games that they still know very well. Imagine an early childhood education that is imagined from that space. Imagine each of us, for some of us, who grew up poor, we knew your next meal is not going to be on the table. You are not going to live a dollar a day. Your next meal is going to come from these very hands. If you did not work, there was no food. If you did not prepare a mortar or a duri in my, in my culture, for your mom, there would be no food. They needed that to pound their grain or the cooking stick to stay with. Very practical. Many years later, I go to MIT and I'm told this is called mind and hand, or learning by doing. And yet, the every day has been the syllabus of life, syllabus of knowledge for millennia. Now, why am I venting? <laughs> Precisely because the bar for our education is too low. We cannot go around training for employment. That's a low bar. The consequence is that having trained for employment, we have ended up with unemployed, even unemployable graduates. That's the reality we have to face. We also have to face the reality that we have engineering programs. Our science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM approach is designed to train a student who will meet the needs of industry. Here's the problem. Most of our industries, I don't know where you come from, but most of our industries, and we saw this in Zimbabwe with deindustrialization. They are foreign companies. They set the vision abroad. They do all the critical thinking there. And they design the product. Our companies, they are there only to assemble, to implement, and to export, to extract and export raw materials to those very same companies, to those, those same, very same companies perpetuating a geography of resource extraction that started during the colonial period. And yet, how is it that our own four beers processed their ore, processed gold? You heard Gus speak the other day. Many of the routes that he des describes in his film, his document, BBC documentary, are of roots that were going out from nodes of manufacturing, gold, steel, etc. So powerful in the 16th and 17th centuries was so, so strong was the steel that iron smiths in the Congo were producing that the Portuguese having come there 
with a high and mighty attitude of wanting to bring their engineers, start foundries there, they found themselves that nobody was buying what they were manufacturing. It gets better than that. They also found that the iron smiths were actually exporting, exporting their wares as far as northern Nigeria. In the end, tail between their legs, they started buying steel from Congolese ironsmiths. The same thing that you find on the East Coast. So, surely you cannot tell me, Africa, that we can do better than our ancestors. Now, where could we start to reimagine a new engineering for Africa, for instance? In my view, we should start from our problems, our resources, our knowledge. Without that self-knowledge, it may be a daunting task. We need to do more. The curriculum I was raised in, in Zimbabwe, was a funnel tunnel system. Students get into the, into the classroom. Students open your ears. <laughs> Professor Funnel in, pour in your uh, information. Student memorize. Student write an exam. Student pass. Student find a job. To replicate dogma. This is what we have ended up with. We need a student that does not run away from problems. We need a student that runs towards problems. I dream of a time in future when the scarcest resource in Africa will not be gold, will not be brains. I heard Madam President talk about brain drain and brain circulation. The scarcest resource will be problems. What I call a first to the problem attitude. But when we, the professoriate, inspire our children, our students, to run towards the problem, we cannot sit this out. We cannot be seen to be running away from the, from the problem. We have to walk the talk. The Pan-African revolutionary and agronomist, trained agro agronomist, once said, that the African intelligentsia must commit suicide to their class and be reborn revolutionaries, truly identified with the deepest aspirations of their people. As far as I know, Aikwe Ama has done it. Today, as I speak, Aikwe Ama is in his village training the next generation of poets from the community. The rest of us? No. We get tenure and title and we say, ah, this is the life. We shut down, leave the drawbridge, and we forget our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why four years after graduation, I finally asked myself a haunting question. I said, Chakaneza, so you want to change Africa? Eh? 54 countries, Africa. <laughs> you want to change even the world. But what have you ever done for your own little village? I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about the suburb you live in in Lagos. I'm talking about your little village. That was the, what broke the camel's back. So what I did is I returned home and set about remodeling my own homestead into a laboratory. I don't mean the one that you think. 
the built laboratory. I simply mean what has always been our own laboratories. Places like this, where people every day wake up in the morning. They have to earn a living. Children have to go to school. Picture the look of a mother who has nothing to feed their children in the morning. Or a father, we are patriarchs in Africa sometimes, yes, who recognizes that they can't do the basic thing, which is to provide. It's that knowledge that I wanted to tap in. It's those spaces that I wanted to tap in. As laboratories where young men like Royan told me, they call them, we are called Mukoma, big brother. If we want to determine how strong a fertilizer is, if we have three fertilizers, it's simple. All we simply do, we plant one plant here, one plant there, one plant there. Take different amounts, similar amounts of different fertilizers. The one that grows more, yields more, will tell us how strong this fertilizer is. We academics are producing useless knowledge. Useless knowledge. If it was useful, show us. If you criticize our governments for doing the wrong thing, let's show them what the right way is. What we can do is to simply criticize. Because criticism, no matter how constructive and well-meaning, is not a substitute for action. It is not. We need to walk the talk. When we say something works, let's show it. Through doing, through action. Thank you.